Welcome back into Meltdonia as we are looking forward to unveiling another Pavlik six pack. The man himself, Brian Pavlik, back here with us to contribute as our wrestling industry expert. That's what I'm calling him. He doesn't call himself that, but those are my words. And we are very excited to get back to another six pack post WrestleMania weekend. This includes Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. If you were a wrestling fan, you were in hog heaven over the past several days, and we appreciate you being here with us as we are going to talk about those things, Brian, that you just have to get off your chest following WrestleMania. First and foremost, hmm. did you have a good time this past weekend with all of the wrestling glory? I had a great time. You know, I, it's it's fun. That we, we talk about now WrestleMania weekend. Really, it's almost six full days of wrestling because you've got SmackDown, you've got Hall of Fame, you've got NXT, you've got two days of WrestleMania, you've got the Monday after Raw. By the way, there's another Friday SmackDown that will conclude their storylines and build the next one. So you really have a long week of WrestleMania. You just named 15 things right there, and with the Pavlik six-pack, you can only get into six things, technically. John, how's he going to accomplish this feat? You are the master of Luntz's list. Yeah. Maybe you can give a little bit of inspiration to Brian Pavlik here for how he should approach the Pavlik six-pack. Let's just say I wish I had six options instead of five, because right. five is not enough and six is not enough, even most of the time. That's right. No, we'll, we'll see what we can do. I, I appreciate just the wrestling talk last week and the course leading in with the Meltdown show. And uh, hopefully we can bring up some good points for the next four months, five months, 12 months of looking into the future. Hopefully we got some good ideas for you. Very here. possible. It is an exciting time to be a wrestling fan. I am still so excited about what we experienced with WrestleMania 40. I'm still on a high over the course of the weekend. Let's get to that first choice on the Pavlik six pack and we're going to let we're going to let producer Tyler take the first choice what beverage are you choosing Tyler I'm going to go with the orange body armor ah I like it Tyler I like it the orange body armor so I'm reading a little bit of the label here and by the way I love body armor whether it's regular or the zero sugar Uh, but I'm looking at no colors uh, limited calories a lot of no 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 and for me it was uh no good Hall of Fame. Oh. oh. I promoted Paul Heyman's Hall of Fame this time last week as one of the most exciting things I thought we were going to see. And we were kind of right on that one. We already knew it was a weak class. We already knew yes. it was going to be a late night. It really didn't start till 930 Central. That's 1030 Philadelphia time. The highlight of the show, I don't know if you caught this, was Pete Rosenberg actually thinking Thunderbolt Patterson was dead (laughs) and saying we were going to honor the memory of Thunderbolt, which set off the whole rest of the night for me. (laughs) They have Heyman go first. After seeing all the other speeches, I don't have a problem with that because that was the... That was the highlight. We should have shut it off. And again, no (laughs) disrespect to legends. My gosh, we're four guys talking in a studio when these guys and girls have given up their bodies. Hey, it's a tiny studio. Get it right. It's a tiny studio (laughs) with bigger gentlemen. And we'll talk about how you guys are looking better than ever, by the way, going into the cruiserweight division in a minute. But um, Heyman goes, does his great speech. And then God bless Bold Nakano. Speaking is just not her thing. Mm -hmm. Beating ladies up with nunchucks was. The... Muhammad Ali, yes, definite, but we used it to give The Rock a belt. Is that really why we inducted Ali? And he's been carrying it around ever since, and he takes much disrespect to anyone who questions him carrying it around very, every single event. Very <laughs> odd. Then we have the U.S. Express. Now, I'm a proud supporter of WrestleMania One and what it stood for, but if this was the way to honor Bray Wyatt because we couldn't induct him this year by having his dad and oh yeah by the way Barry Windham happens to be the uncle that I think fell flat if you wanted to honor Bray just have Mike Rotunda who's a great legend in and of himself we're thinking IRS that uh, that was kind of disappointing and then you go on to Thunderbolt Patterson who you know that was as good of a speech as that man could have they kept trying to figure out how to get him off the stage you know and and good for them by by helping out and and by the way if we were playing wrestlemania bingo 
And in the 068 spot of your card, you had Thunderbolt Patterson being introduced at WrestleMania with the ECW theme behind him. Yeah. I would have said, give me another card. This one's broken. Because <laughs> that ain't happen. But it's true. Thunderbolt Patterson got introduced or inducted into the Hall of Fame with the ECW's theme behind him. What a world we live in. Yeah. And then, of course, having Rock's grandmother as the, I guess, headliner. The headline. This was yeah. the worst decision since the COVID WrestleMania. The true main event, if you remember, was the secret bonus match of the Big Show challenging Drew McIntyre. So technically, Big Show has headlined a WrestleMania one on one for a championship, and now Rock's grandmother headlined, which turned into a Rock promo. I'm sorry, this has zero calorie or zero sugar. That had zero. Oomph to get me started for WrestleMania. My, I, I drink to it, though. Good my gosh. biggest issue with the Paul Heyman speech, and I don't have a problem with it being first because none of those other things are a draw, yeah. and it would have felt like filler if you would have had to sit through it to get to Heyman. Uh, my biggest Pretty issue was he took a, a really big shot at JR, and I didn't like it. The crowd didn't like it. it he lost a lot of momentum, I think, after that. And That is prime ECW, Paul Heyman, I, I guess. Know. But, yeah, the, it, some things I know we're, we're – using it as a form, they've got to fix the Hall of Fame in general. We we have headliners for the next 12 years. I'm talking Triple H and The Rock and Cena and CM Punk when that happens. But who are going to be your mid-card guys and girls to fill this thing out for years to come? Are we really going to have Val Venus up there in three years? I know Tyler will be very excited about, <laughs> hello, ladies. <laughs> but who who is going to build this up? I think... And the crowd is, they're obnoxious sometimes. You may have to go back to almost like a baseball Hall of Fame where you get two, maybe three good inductions with great speeches and leave it alone. Because this, this was a mess, and I think we're going to see a downward trend if they don't fix it. Maybe keep the same amount of people, but limit the amount of actual speeches to the headliners. I, I I, maybe know. that's good. And, get a wave. And, and, and create a, a video package for all the others that's... Yeah symbolic of the moment but you're right some of these speeches are just mortifying to have to sit through yeah. it seems like they're going too old for the casual fan who people our age it's 2024 but people our age got in at the attitude era mm -hmm. peak time when we were growing up so like anything before that if you're not the absolute giant names yeah. that we know that are already in the hall of fame as far as i'm concerned or as far as, far as i know any big yeah. name before then is already in the hall yeah. of fame i don't care and that sounds bad, and I know I'm a very casual fan, but when they so I'm not I'm not a person who will seek out and watch the Hall of Fame yeah. ceremony to begin with, but when they bring them all out at WrestleMania and get them to stand on the stars and everything, outside of Paul Heyman, and then only because of the name, knowing The Rock's grandmother, I'm like, who? Mm -hmm. Because in a celebrity thing, doesn't really that doesn't really count because that there's you always know who the celebrity yeah. is, but outside of that, it's like who are these people? And if 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 I didn't see the name. Rotunda, I wouldn't have even known that there was any tie to Bray Wyatt there, and they used it just to promote the documentary they did with him. So it's like, I don't know who these people are, why I should care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Paul Heyman, he's still about to come out in the main event. But outside of that, I don't know. And I feel like there are a lot of wrestlers within the last 20 years that we may have fond memories of, and they'll just disappear because it's all, let's go back and honor these. Some, you know how baseball has like the legends? Mm -hmm. uh, or I guess, the NFL, I guess everybody does it. It's like yep. a legends category. Have your legends category. But to have two, three, four really good, hey, everybody knows who these people are. I agree. And if you don't have that, don't just add people just for the sake of adding I people agree. to it. Let's continue on with the Pavlik six-pack. We yeah, are one great down. Great pick, by the way, Tyler. Now you got me all down like John to start <laughs> off this whole thing. Just one down, five to, to go. go. Uh, John, I'm going to let you take the next pick here. Where, well are, you, um, where are you headed? All right. Well, that was kind of a downer. Let's get yeah. spicy. Let's get spicy. Oh, let's get – okay. So I'm excited about this one because, you know <clears> – <throat> The Coke product, of course, it's great. It, it's fine as it is. But that spice, as we talked about last week, that little bit of raspberry where I've now tried it. I'm on my second 12-pack at the house. It's <laughs> awesome. I, I'm a fan for life. It gives it that extra oomph that a classic needs. And we had a story like you wouldn't believe a year or so in the making with Cody Rhodes. But every great story needs narration. And if you still think Michael Cole is not one of the best to ever do this, please consider rethinking that. 
because he added just as much to the WrestleMania weekend as anybody else. It started with his weatherman forecast doing his best Jane Span on Friday night. It feels like 46 degrees. That was unintentionally hilarious, but that brought out a Michael Cole that has been handcuffed for years. And then the fact that he was on the call, he tried for the Al Michaels, do you believe in miracles with Gunther? He tried for his own catchphrase with Cody, but he delivered such emotion and it was complimented by the young lady that is going to be a rock star for years to come, our ring announcer, Samantha Irvin. Yes. The graphics, we talked about the Lee fitting graphics last week about, you know, the video game like challenger champion, but she was in those shots. So her visual presence was as striking as her vocal presence. Those two narrators of this story added so much to it. We are back to glory days of announcing what we had with Monsoon and Fink. Back in WCW, Tony Schiavone, Gary Michael Capetta, Michael Buffer even endorsed Samantha Irvin. Those two can talk about wrestling and announce about wrestling. I think we're living in a golden age once again with those two entities alone. Fantastically said. Samantha Irvin. Spiced it up. Here's the biggest thing that comes across. Samantha Irvin wants to be there. Yeah. She is captivated by the moments and her getting emotional during the Cody Rhodes win. Whew, great video. An all-time great moment and one where the emotion absolutely poured through the screen of what was happening there in the moment at the live event. Michael Cole, once again, as you mentioned, going from chief meteorologist to capturing those perfect moments yep. of night two. My biggest complaint about Michael Cole is that there is no one next in line to be the next Michael Cole. That's because he's be so good at what he does, and he is the clear voice of the WWE, mm -hmm. there is nobody that's next in line. Corey Graves does not do it for no. me. me and it's I think that he cares. Don't get me wrong, and I don't want to be highly critical of someone who cares as much as it seems Corey Graves does. That's right. But he's not there yet. As being, I think he's a great secondary guy. Mm -hmm. I do. But I don't think he's a lead guy, and I don't know who the next Michael Cole is, and I worry – that Michael Cole may not be in this for the long haul for some reason yeah. and may decide to go off and do something else or retire, and there is no succession plan there. When Michael Cole does not have Vince McMahon in his ear, he's a completely different type of broadcaster. Loved it. This guy was a war correspondent. He was. This guy knows broadcasting, hmm? and he's the perfect man for this moment, and I appreciate you making this a part of the Pavlik Six Pack because oh, this team does deserve the recognition that they're getting. And they added so much weight to every moment that occurred and left grown men crying. Yeah. John, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> disagree with anything we've said? No, I, I have always really liked Michael Cole. Um, I, do, I do like when they get away. I, I'm not a fan of when they take sides in it. Oh. I've always been very much. I don't even like Homer broadcasts like in football. Uh, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm very – you know, professional in everything you do. When I try to call a game, no matter who is paying my, my paycheck, I still try to be very middle of the road and professional. And I get that has happened throughout, you know, the grand scheme of wrestling all time. Um, but, you know, when you have Pat and Corey, like, taking one side and then Cole's mm -hmm. kind of in the middle, like, let's just call the match. And obviously kind of taking the Cody side of things. Yeah. As opposed or the Ray Mysterio side. He has favorites. It he comes has favorites. Yeah, he yeah, has yeah. favorites and it comes across. But I do like when he can turn it off sometimes and just be a good broadcaster and – um, you know, I, I, I like, you know, and that's the other thing is I don't, I think Pat McAfee's a good sidekick for certain things, not for everything. No. I don't really care for Corey Graves, even as a sidekick necessarily. I feel like there's not even a good color guy necessarily to go along the way when Michael Cole leaves. It's a, an absolute disaster at that point, because I don't <laughs> know, cause you have to have a good mix of play by play and color basically in any good broadcast. And so the colors kind of, yeah, you know, they had their moments, both of them, but when Michael's gone and then you just have kind of eh, over here, then it's a complete disaster. A couple of things. They're, they've tried a couple of traditional broadcasters out and they have not worked out in recent years, trying to have that second Michael Cole figure. Mm -hmm. They need to find that pronto. McAfee needs Cole. Cole needs McAfee. I feel like they both complement each other really well. You feel the genuine chemistry and passion they have for working with one another. And I think that both are heightened by the other. And that's what you want from any great commentary team. 
I think when it's all said and done, Colin McAfee may be right up there with JR and the King, and I'm not kidding one bit about that. They always say the best wrestling personalities are who you are dialed up a little bit. That's why Pat McAfee, love him or hate him, yeah. is born to be in professional wrestling. Absolutely. Tyler, who was the voice of wrestling for you when you were watching? Was it Michael Cole at the time, or was it still JR? Is there one voice that comes across as being a part of your childhood wrestling memories? Uh, I assume it would have been Michael Cole. Okay. Well, it sounds like he made a profound impact on your life. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say old Gordon Soley over there behind the monitor. <laughs> My gosh, Tyler. Gorilla, right, so. Gorilla Monsoon is a voice, obviously, that comes across as being a, a young wrestling fan that when you heard it, it it's just... It's going to be a happening. It just it, it hit hard. It did. I, Gorilla, Jesse Ventura... Um, even Tony Schiavone, I know, even, you know, give him credit. I know we're talking a lot about WrestleMania. Excalibur does a great X's and O's kind of thing as far as description. Taz is hilarious. The guys who are passionate, it comes through. And I think wrestling in all different uh, federations right now have some great passionate announcers. And hopefully it keeps up. You know what I'm passionate about? Mm -mm. I'm passionate about that Coke Zero Sugar. Coke Zero Sugar right here closest now, to me. Now, I feel bad picking the Zero Sugars and stuff now because I'm worried we're going to get another negative take. Is that correct? <laughs> Actually, I... you know, this one could have been negative, but I'm, I'm going to look at it as a, a positive here because the biggest WrestleMania of all time, right? And I think a current slogan of Coke Zero right now is the best tasting Coke of all time. So we got a lot of hyperbole going on here. And this is the biggest WrestleMania of all time, biggest WrestleMania of all time. We predicted that it would be in terms of social media impressions. It wouldn't necessarily be the best. But did it just seem like something was just slightly off this WrestleMania? And I've been trying to figure out what was off. I am very happy for WWE as a company that they have taken the WrestleMania kind of operations and spread it out across the world throughout the year. Examples, Clash at the Castle, mm -hmm. the Saudi Arabia shows, whether you like them or not, they're still huge productions. The Australia Elimination they're Chamber. They're going to France here They're soon. going to France. They've had great crowds in England with Money in the Bank. They're, they did the Elimination Chamber in Canada. They did a Puerto Rico show, which was insane. Which had the Bad best Bunny crowd ever. And, yeah. WrestleMania as... Sorry, Tyler, you stay over there for a second. As these men <laughs> knew it, it was the culmination of storylines. It was the biggest production. It was the celebrities. It was the stage and the graphics and the entrances and the costumes. But they found a way to take WrestleMania and repackage it into big events. SummerSlam has its own moments now. You can't think of SummerSlam anymore without Brock Lesnar picking up a ring on a tractor. So all these things that Which I was there was, for, by the way, I bet you went nuts. <laughs> all these things at WrestleMania, it was only a happening at WrestleMania has been spread out. That's eh, for WrestleMania because, well, we know we're going to get big shows down the road, but it's good because now you can pack 70,000 people for SummerSlam. You can pack 50,000 people for money in the bank. Good for WWE. A little light on the WrestleMania that eh, it's not, the biggest, baddest, but still great, still had a good time, but you see the stage, you see the XL, and you go, that's it? Saudi Arabia had this, that, and the other, or Classic the Castle was like a, I don't know, something just off. See, like, I do think that passion from these international crowds and out of the area crowds, they really do resonate through the screen, and mm -hmm. they create a little bit more of, uh, oh, we should be more grateful for the things we do get here in the Correct. States because these fans are going absolutely insane for this. Loving it. And every crowd wants to try to be one that's memorable. And the <laughs> first night of Philadelphia, it was very different than the second night. A lot of that due to the temperature and yeah. the weather and the intensity there. But I think it's clear to me, John, that WWE has a global strategy under the vision of Paul Levesque and they are executing that, and the numbers reflect the growth worldwide with this product right now, and it seems to be on fire. It is, and so that then asks the question, okay, well, you've been you've hit all the hot stadiums around here. When do you take WrestleMania elsewhere? When do you take it to, now I don't know that you do WrestleMania in Saudi Arabia, which I know is a every, an every year mm -hmm. thing now, but 
Could you hit London? Could you go to Wembley and do it there? Could you go to uh, Australia and do it there? Could you go to any of these places and do it there? It's kind of the question we ask with like professional sports. Hey, when's the NFL going to move to London? Because mm-hmm. there's clearly a crowd there. Every time they play, it's a giant draw. And if you had a home team, minus travel, yeah. it would work outside of that. So you asked the question with WrestleMania, so I'm curious with that. SummerSlam, same kind of thing. I guess the Big Four, I don't know if any of the Big Four have left um, the country or not, but – it is football stadiums for the big ones, and it seems like you probably could even do more in football stadiums if you wanted to, um, or baseball stadiums, as was the case with the Rumble this year. Um, but the the global appeal is there, and I guess people outside of America view WWE the way we view something like the Premier League. Like, soccer is the oh, biggest sport, absolutely. but it's not here. But if you're in another country, you view WWE as like the Premier League of Wrestling as opposed to yep. New Japan or anything else that exists outside of um, outside of America. So it, the global appeal is there, and obviously promoting a lot of the Saudi Arabia stuff I guess they're about to do with uh, King and Queen of the Ring. But it, it is going to be interesting to see when do they actually pick up WrestleMania and make that move, and what will the reaction be when they make that happen. I think if you go back to WrestleMania 18 and you look at that crowd reaction that you got in Canada, it's looked at as one of the biggest moments in the history of WrestleMania. Rock, Hogan, Rock comes in. He's supposed to be the guy everybody's cheering for. And then you see the flip and you see the crowd embracing Hulk Hogan and wanting to see that legacy extended and continued. I think you have more moments like that potentially down the pipeline. And 22 WrestleManias ago, by the way. And you know, what's also insane. WrestleMania hadn't been back to Canada since. Yeah. Tragedy. It is. Let's go with Tyler for another pick of the Pavlik six pack. Which one are we going with? Which beverage? Uh, let's go with the Dasani water. Oh, the Dasani water. Very good. You can't go water without thinking Triple H. Okay. I mean, we'd spit it all over the studio, but I'd like your equipment. Thank you you so much. You need to get the bill from me. (laughs) Appreciate that. All right. So, one of the things, I thought WrestleMania moment was the most overused phrase for the longest time. The most overused phrase this Friday through Monday gamut of wrestling in the WWE was the triple, how does he get word it? The Paul, the Paul Triple Le- H Levesque era. I think it's, yeah, I think or it's is just it the, the Paul tri- Levesque era. Paul yeah. Levesque. The guy in charge now is who we all knew as Triple H. And it started Friday night with Paul Heyman completely burying Vince McMahon on public television saying, here's... Paul Levesque, the guy. Paul Levesque in the tuxedo, by the way. The only true classic tuxedo. I thought that was ironic, too. Then Saturday night, he opens WrestleMania, does his The Games mm-hmm. shit. Then Stephanie McMahon <laughs> publicly disowns her father. And it was great. <laughs> and it was hilarious yeah. for it, her it husband. It was like Shiv from Succession yeah. and Tom getting a chance to run the company. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it was. And, and then he gets called out by Cody Rhodes for the post celebration. He kicks off Monday night. Look, I love Triple H as a performer. I think he's done great for the business. If we're talking about Brian, what are you looking forward to coming out of WrestleMania? He needs to rely on three things for this to be a successful reign. And if we're using WWE taglines, then now forever. The then is he has to rely on his passion for wrestling and not sports entertainment. Sadly, this may mean more 40-minute matches and long title reigns, but he just gets what pro wrestling is. So he's got to rely on that. He's got his now or his present in his champions. So there were seven title changes, by the way, at WrestleMania. All right, so you have Cody Rhodes, who there's history there. You have Damian Priest, who is one of his boys. Are you also counting Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre who McIntyre he winning for was big on in minutes. NXT? So there's three. Another title change, Bailey. Again, we we've talked about how high he was with the Bailey character back in NXT. Okay, we also have Sami Zayn, mm-hmm. one of his greatest independent signings of all time. And, and we can just go on and on with when you look at the champions now, he's got his people. That's the what then or now is. The forever is how are you going to look into the future? And I think two things he needs to really address as we look in the Triple H era, and this is more of a business side of things. He needs to land some of these free agent signings. I know 
not signing Okada and Mercedes Monet and Will Ospreay from AEW, that's not going to bankrupt WWE. They're no. going to be fine. But they also whiffed on all three. So you've got guys from AEW like an MJF, a Ricky Starks, even some of these international superstars who are going to be looking. He needs to land a couple of those just to show we're not just promising you WrestleMania or and WWE. And that feels name. inevitable. MJF will end up in the WWE, no he doubt. He was more born to be a WWE wrestler. Have fun. Have a good time. The other thing is we've got these TV deals in place. What happens to this WWE network? Because – it is unfair for wrestling fans for so much greatness to be stored in one location, was on their own $9.99 per month channel, now it's on Peacock. Where do they go with that? Now, Netflix. Well, Netflix, I, I think they should stick with YouTube. And the reason why, you guys put your show on YouTube for various reasons. As I am looking for the meltdown on YouTube... Wouldn't you know, because of the things that I interact with, I'm seeing full match this morning, mm -hmm. 30 minutes, Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, WrestleMania 6. Ooh, I'm going to watch that later because that's WrestleMania. That's one of the greatest moments. I think if they lean into YouTube, we're talking hundreds of thousands of views. We're talking the money that could come in from that. I think stick there for a little bit just to get people engaged with some of this old archival footage. Then make that deal somewhere. But I think YouTube's a good landing spot for now to get the casual fan back into it. I think YouTube used as a secondary posting source. Fair enough. Where Peacock or Netflix, they get first rights of you're going to have it for a 72-hour span, and then we're going to throw it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because by then, we can start racking up a lot of different views, and it will actually build an appetite for, oh, I, right. I want to watch the next thing live. Right. And it will benefit those initial... See, I, production companies. I think they're too far gone with <clears throat> NBC Universal, what they've done, and then now Netflix with what they've already started shifting away to. Yeah. But I think YouTube is the right answer for everything mm -hmm. because you can hide what you want behind a paywall and put what you want for free all within the exact same platform. Mm -hmm. That right now, if you watch the pre show, a lot of people can watch, will watch that on YouTube probably more than on Peacock or right. on Facebook or anywhere yes. else that it right. is, that then all you got to do is hit one button and it switches to, hey, subscribe for mm -hmm. nine 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 a month. Yep. And it's you literally don't have to leave the platform. You can say exactly where you are. I think you're both making the argument, go to the people instead of having the people have to come to you. And yeah. I understand that. Because it's also the best operating platform. My Peacock was a disaster oh on God. Sunday. It was rough. It was rough. That, that, now, rough. Netflix is better. It should hopefully be better. And their live events, which has been very sparse and rare so far have been performing good yeah. so you got to get the tech right which wwe network was okay peacock has not been great in general and hopefully netflix will be better but once again that's where google can absolutely thrive yeah with youtube there's a name you mentioned in this and i, I want to know does the name damian priest come back up in anything you're going to discuss it does not but i do want to address i know john mentioned in last edition damian priest cash in does nothing for him it did nothing for him but boy, that reaction. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if people were just wanting a cash in. One of the best choke slams I've seen. It was in fantastic. Years. And it's got to be the second best cash in in wrestling history. The first being Seth Rollins, because that was the actual main event. He did his in WrestleMania. I think the third would be Edge cashing in on Cena because it was the original. Um, but hey, they paid off a moment that we predicted, by the way. I. But here's what I want you to answer. This Long is why term, I was setting it up. Uh, but short term. This is why I'm, I'm asking. Do you see in Damian Priest what obviously Hunter sees in Damian Priest? What's what's your long term forecast on whether or not he's going to get over fully with the crowd? Because the moment got over, but I don't think Damian Priest is necessarily over. I think a a character like Damian Priest can. I don't think he can go as supernatural as Undertaker. Bondage Undertaker is Bondage what he was referred to last I, night. I, I heard that. I think he could borderline hit that Bray Wyatt psychological master kind of, again, not as supernatural as <laughs> Teleportation Undertaker that we saw the other night. But I think if he gets into that character instead of just bad Puerto Rican who's just tall and, you know, good looking and muscular and athletic, I think if he edges, you know, the Judgment Day is supposed to be the supernatural kind of feel. Lean into that. I think you've got a great character. I think if you were to take 
Roman Reigns and combine him with Test, you get a Damian Priest, sort of. It's got a feel to it. Yeah. And the question is, is he going to be more Roman Reigns or is he going to be more Test? And we'll see. Because one of those careers obviously went to the very top and one of those careers faded out pretty quick. As a casual fan, am I wrong in thinking... So when you win the Rumble, the whole thing is you win it, and then you're going to main event WrestleMania, basically. And, and to choose and get, a, get a title yeah. fight. Yep. Um, am I wrong in thinking as a casual fan, winning Money in the Bank, is that is that just one step down from that, that when you win Money in the Bank, you're at least obviously guaranteed a title match, even if it's for five seconds and you win or lose. But that like that is – like Damian Priest, to me, as a very casual person, yeah. is never a person that would win the Royal Rumble, mm-hmm. at least as of right, right now. So just very just one small step down for me is money in the bank because then again you have a title shot yep. that he's still not that person that and 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 short term I'm not saying it didn't work him cashing you knew he probably had to cash right. at some point right. uh, this past weekend but that that's not the person that there's a lot of other people on that roster even that I'm not necessarily a big fan of that I would think oh that person makes over. a little more sense that no. person makes a little more sense and I know once you make that move you've made the move and that dude has the briefcase until you Absolutely. decide to do something with it but at this point it's like. Oh, who has money in the bank? Damian Priest. Eh, okay, is there a really way care. to freshen up the money in the bank gimmick? Because it is running its course. Let's be honest. The moments in the short term always feel great, but it's like a sugary snack that it feels great in those first few moments. And then all of a sudden, I feel nauseated. I eat too much sugary snacks. That's the way I feel with money in the bank all the time, where it yeah. feels like short term there's a rush, and then long term it's like, oh, man, we got to watch somebody else carry around a briefcase for a year now coming up. I, you know, it drags too long. It it, it, too long. It's a great question, and it's a perfect question to ask after we're still trying to figure out did we actually see an eclipse yesterday or not? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll promise you this yeah. the Meltdown crew did not did see not, an eclipse no, yesterday. Yeah. No, we did not. Money in the bank, it's, it's just like a few other things. It's a gimmick, it's fun. It's, I think, more comes out of it because there's the anything can happen moment of it you know at royal rumble that means somebody is going to wrestlemania money in the bank that could happen later that night we've seen it that could mean the next night on raw it mm-hmm. could also mean at wrestlemania so i think that's why it's exciting because you just never know you have to tune in but i don't know it it, it something does building a whole pay-per-view around it sure it's a gimmicky thing but you know, it's worked in the past. I would like to see a figure like Brock Lesnar win Money in the Bank. I would. Just knowing that his lingering force is out there the at one, all times. The one year he did was actually hilarious because he turned it into a boom box and just became this farce of himself, which I, was actually very I kind of want to see a part-timer win Money in the Bank. I'm tired of seeing the beat-up briefcase. Just give me somebody who could pop back in at any moment yeah, and cause carnage. I mean, I, I don't watch it all the time, but it right. seems like he's always there with Judgment Day no matter who is yeah. wrestling. From Ray Ripley to Dominic, whoever right, it may right. be, that he's always there. So you're always thinking, ooh, there's a briefcase, but you know it's not just going to happen on a random. I mean, yeah. anytime he's there, it's not going to happen because he's not even involved in the match half the time when he's out there. So it is kind of weird. This whole discussion is taking on a life of its own, but that's yeah, what sorry. happens when Brian's <laughs> in here. We have so many questions, oh, and we know we if we don't get them, if we don't Jeez. get them out of our system, that we're just going to hate ourselves watching this back and being like, "Oh man, I wish we would have asked about this." So we'll fix Money in the Bank on a later date. We will. John, you get a chance to pick the next beverage mm. in the Pavlik six pack. Mm, you know, I like the color silver. So let's go with the old diet Coke, the diet Coke. So uh, it's a little bit of a stretch. How I'm going to transition with this one. We'll go with it. Uh, <laughs> diet Coke to me, it, it doesn't mean anti Coke. It means Coke light. And you know, for a while there, when really these were the only two products on the market, I think Coke diet Coke was the alternative to Coke, right? Well, there's another product out there that is the alternative to Coke, and we won't name them because they're not a nice sponsor of this sister company. But there's a man in the company who wears a, a certain logo on his shoulder bicep area, and this, of course, we're talking about CM Punk. Mm-hmm. Now, if you didn't hear enough about the Paul Triple H Levesque era of come upcoming celebratory whatever, you heard or saw CM Punk all weekend some of it legitimate storyline use some of it i just felt like they were getting cm punk to say we've got cm punk for instance every single hall of famer in their introductory package cm punk had something to say did he really know muhammad ali or was he just speaking as a fan did he really know thunderbolt patterson it came across as oh me and thunderbolt back down in philly back in the day 
Then he was on the pre-show panels, both on Saturday and Sunday. Of course, he had a big role to play in a match. Then on Monday night, he interferes again. And now he's doing the post-Raw exclusive, wishing Philly all the best in the world. To coin a phrase and put in an intentional pun, WWE has gone all in on CM Punk. And I hope they know what they're doing. Now, we are saying this, and on Wednesday of this week, there's going to be this thing on the AEW where they release the Wembley Stadium footage of apparently Punk starting a fight, getting beat. I don't care. I don't know what it's supposed to prove, but it's supposed to be a shot at CM Punk. He doesn't hold grudges really well. Uh, he, he, it's not like he forgets things <laughs> That's in the past. putting it lightly, yeah. Brian. And, and, and here's what I'm saying. There's too much dependability on him and Drew McIntyre to blur the lines of reality and fiction where something is going to set him off. It's been proven more than not. WWE, good for you getting him. He's a big name. He's the anti-Coke, if you will, the Diet Coke, if you will. But just be careful with the whole situation because, again, CM Punk on Luntz's list, we love the character. Phil Brooks, the man, look. Woo. He's Any, a Blackhawks fan. Anytime Blackhawks you sign fan. CM Punk Damn. to your roster, anytime mm-hmm. you sign him to your roster, you understand there is a risk and there is a reward. You understand you are playing with fire. You understand you are going to get those pops in the stadium, yep. but that you may also, somebody may get popped There's backstage. You pops. understand <laughs> that this is the gamble you take yep. with a personality like Phil Brooks, with a personality like CM Punk. Mm-hmm. However, I find it a little hypocritical of the Pavlik six pack mm. to say that the future of wrestling is engaging people on YouTube, but that CM Punk is being too overused because I'm looking at the YouTube numbers oh, and shit. anything that CM Punk is attached to on WWE's YouTube account is leaps and bounds ahead of everything else. I said it was a good business, <laughs> but just HR, you know, a bottom line figure, C- the CFO of a company. Hey, <laughs> HR. <laughs> you don't bring him into Survivor Series the no, way they did. You no. don't pay him the contract you did to have him sit on the sidelines and collect dust because we all know physically right now, just like Drew McIntyre has pointed out, he's a fragile man. He is. The question is how fragile is his ego going to be in the years to come because right now he's playing nice. Right now, he's fully a company man, and this is the first time in a long time in WWE history where I can tell you that I can't name a lot of people within the company right now that are publicly disgruntled, Mm. and CM Punk was publicly disgruntled during his whole original run in WWE, Mm -hmm. and it delivered some of the best promos we've ever seen of blurring those lines, Mm -hmm. but right now, what you're getting is a nice, warm, fuzzy, I'm home CM Punk. The question is, when does that flip and change? Because he... I don't know if he's going to be physically capable of main eventing WrestleMania, which we all know is his hope, his dream, his passion. John, you are a giant CM Punk fan. Yes. You understand the risk reward balance of having him on the roster. Yes. I understand why the YouTube numbers are the way they are. You understand why the casual fan, which you count yourself as being among, why the casual fan is drawn to CM Punk. You understand why. I do. and, And let me also say this. He would have been on screen a lot less had he not gotten injured. Because he's on every panel that he wouldn't have been doing that if he's part of whatever storyline to then Boy. fight at WrestleMania, whether it was for, you know, against Seth or whatever it may have been for WrestleMania. So his injury has actually put him more in the limelight in everything that you do, whether it's being a commentator for just watching, because I don't, I don't watch all that other stuff necessarily, but even just watching WrestleMania, there he is on commentary. Um, so he works. He worked for me when he was there before because he did come off as it's not all kayfabe. It's Mm -hmm. real. And it's like, okay, I can respect real CM Punk. I thought the pairing of him and him and Paul Heyman was great because it was two masters on the microphone working to it, working in tandem with each other, as opposed to him covering for people who couldn't do it like Brock or Roman Reigns or whoever else he's worked with that it just, flows well it works for the casual person he you know had that whole uh you know lifestyle that's very, a very clean lifestyle um so that kind of gets over with the kids because wwe made a hard shift into kids at one point um that's it just worked with everybody parents and, and children it worked for people in between like me it there's something for everybody with cm punk and when he opens his 
mouth and talks about the business side of things mm-hmm. and, and, and breaks the illusion, then it's like, I actually get to see in. I don't have to think, hmm, I wonder if he's actually hurt or not. Like, CM Punk's actually hurt. Like, I, I believe that he's actually hurt. I believe exactly what he feels about getting hurt <laughs> and how that totally affects his bottom line. And, like, I can respect that and I can enjoy that. And here's what I'm worried about more than anything about this second WWE run. That it's going to be looked at more for him being an out-of-the-ring performer than in-ring performer because mm. physically right now there are major concerns, major questions, and anytime those are posed, another injury is sustained both in his AEW run and in his WWE run. You know his heart's in it. Yep. You can feel that. You understand the passion, but can he physically hold up? It's going to be a question for years to come here. I hope he hangs in there because, again, YouTube numbers, everything. I'm sure any feud they want to stick him in now, he's got three already built in. He's got Damian Priest. If he wants to say, I should have always been the rightful person in this spot, he's got Seth Rollins and their little bickering that they started and – Apparently, that's blurred over into reality as well. And then, of course, Drew McIntyre. So there's three opportunities right there from the start once he comes back. And then you can even get into feuding with Cody or anybody else if he turns heel. He's a great character to have feuds with. How long does it go? So the Diet Coke is gone. It is out of the Pavlik six-pack. I'm going to make a wild assumption here. And this may be completely wrong. And if I whiff on this, just feel free to roast me. Because I don't know what's a part of the Pavlik six-pack. But I have a feeling that this choice that I'm about to make of the Coca-Cola is indeed the final boss of the Pavlik Six Pack in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Am I right or wrong about that, Brian? Uh, it, it, you're right. Okay. Woo! You're right. And, and, and let's... I was waiting for him to be like, no, actually, Jason Kelsey. You <laughs> yeah, know, actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Swift's boyfriend's brother is what yeah. we're going to Actually, with. the biggest headline was the band that played Rhea Ripley's out. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, the red. I apologize. The lights are getting to me, and the rock is making me emotional, all right? The red here. You're a Cody crybaby, it I, looks I like. Lo- yeah. <laughs> I lo- I'm getting emotional thinking of Samantha Urban. The red. I always like the red gauntlet that Roman wears, by the way, the, the glove. and mm-hmm. I don't remember if he had red shoes on, but I always remember because he's punching with the red and everything. Um, this stands for the bloodline, the red blood. Yeah, sorry. A little sadistic there. If you think the bloodline thing is over, you are sadly mistaken. Uh, did you guys like the Walking Dead early seasons? And Tyler, I know you've been quiet this episode, so I'll engage with Tyler here for a minute here, gentlemen. Yeah, I really liked the uh, the first few seasons. I tapped out at probably around season six. Though. All right, in in the first few seasons, who was your favorite villain? Favorite villain? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the governor. Ah, thank you for saying that because this is a great transition. See. Once The Walking Dead transitioned from zombies to the people were actually the enemy and the villain, you had this governor character. And for a long time, he used his charm, he used his persuasion, almost like a Roman Reigns type figure. And then we just could not get rid of the governor. Everything we tried, and then our heroes had to fight back, and finally they conquered the governor. And what happened when the governor's story ended? We started hearing about this new guy, Negan, this guy that would completely set the series into a completely different genre and just go all over the place. We've gotten rid of our governor in Roman Reigns, and Negan, a.k.a. The Rock, has stepped in. And now we get the new bad guy. And I think you're going to get this more sadistic character of The Rock than we've ever seen. And not to bring up horror memories, but (laughs) I don't think anybody goes the way of Glenn and Abraham from Walking Dead, but I could see him, The Rock, keeping the mental checklist of who were those guys in the ring celebrating with Cody, who helped him out, picking them off one by one. He said he has to go away, he the physical person. But he's still got Bloodline members in the WWE. He still has people, new characters we haven't seen in the Bloodline yet, like Anaya Jax bringing in your first female muscle. Oh, by the way, his daughter is the NXT general manager. Who's to say in six, eight months, she won't be using her authority figure to do what he needs to do. This story could be even better than our governor story, than our Roman Reigns story. And even though there's just whispers of Negan at this point until he comes back, 
his cronies will carry out things. I, I think we're in store for real good cinematic stuff over the next six to eight months until he finally decides to reveal himself again. And then we've got all kinds of stories from there. In the shadows of the Empire, the First Order emerged, mm. John, and we could definitely see that here with the Bloodline in this 2.0 version of yeah. the Bloodline. Now, it's gone through, version one has gone through many changes for sure. But this secondary Bloodline, Brian's right. This faction's not going away. There's too much money to be made. There's too much history. There's too much buildup. There's too many signings that, as he said, we have not seen unveiled yet, even as a part of this faction. And you have those looming figures of The Rock and Roman Reigns taking a hiatus and eventually coming back home to roost. And it's going to be a huge pop when Roman returns. It's going to be a huge pop when The Rock returns. They're going to have unfinished business. And right now, as Cody Rhodes, we're living in his era. There's that looming sense of threat that his past is going to eventually catch back up to him and who knows what the heck the rock handed him in the middle of the ring last night Ooh. to remind him that i am always going to be in your mind that is my biggest question after watching that opening 35 40 minutes that they did um is what did he give him because obviously that can kind of maybe i mean it, it probably was nothing and they'll figure it out down the line that hey, I handed him something because they kept it very guarded when he put it in his pocket. Then we'll figure that out when we get there. It may be some kind of you know championship ring that has something to do with something. It could be something. I don't know what it is. But for me, I've made my dislike of Roman Reigns very clear that The Rock is still the final boss, and I don't know if they'll keep that gimmick or not, but he's still very much the guy of the bloodline. They can say Roman Reigns is the chief all they want to. The Rock is really the chief of that. And he is to the people because he's The Rock. I mean, The Rock is one of the biggest wrestlers of all time. That's he's right. a person that every time he comes back, everybody loses their mind. So when he comes back, I agree when Roman comes back, he probably will get a good pop from it. But long term, The Rock will always have the pop. So whatever the bloodline is moving forward, I just hope, A, The Rock is in, is in charge of whatever it is, whether he's actually in the ring or not because he's 51 now. So by the time he comes back, and I know he's just going off to do Moana or whatever, but like <laughs> once he comes back, he'll be, you know, mid fifties really by the time yeah. a storyline plays out that look, we see Ric Flair in the ring super old. We see plenty of people in the ring super old. I'm not saying it can't be done, right. but it's not what you expect from the electrifying personality that is the rock. So I'm just it has to be played very correctly. For me, the casual fan, because I never bought into the bloodline in general. I bought into Cody a little bit because I bought into Cody off the screen more so than on the screen. And I, you're always bought into the rock. So that's more what I'm buying into as opposed to let's go back to what this was with Roman Reigns being the head guy. I'd rather see Roman Reigns back with the shield, which by the way, that was the best part. Of oh, it was fantastic. But, but I like, that's when I like Roman Reigns when Roman Reigns was just kind of the muscle of the shield and you let Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose worry about talking more so than him. And I love that whole stable, but that's more where I would like somebody like Roman Reigns. And I just, I feel like now, obviously he's like still one of the guys, even though he's not the guy right now because of Cody, but the rock is always going to be the guy period. Speaking of Seth Rollins got absolutely destroyed over the whole two nights of WrestleMania. I mean, <laughs> every did. time you thought he was done losing, he'd come back <laughs> he and he'd somehow too. find another loss. Yep. I don't, I'm not a Seth Rollins guy. I can't get into his gimmick. I think that he was not put over at all by his, <laughs> His other superstars, I mean, even on commentary, they were making fun of him right. and talking about how goofy he was. Right. I, he's just, he needs to find another gimmick, in my opinion. But uh, See, that's why the shield worked for me. It's because it wasn't about the individuals. I don't care about Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley, whatever. Is he still in AEW? I don't even know. Yep. Like, I don't care about him. I honestly don't really care about Seth Rollins, the person. And I definitely don't care about Roman Reigns, as I've made it clear. But together, I cared about the shield not the individual people that were with it. So that worked for me. So I'd love to see something like that for Seth Rollins moving forward too. The shield tease and swerve with Seth Rollins coming back in that gear was a part of that final match. Mm -hmm. It's one we had speculated about all week long. It's one that everything has built to 40 years of WrestleMania building to this moment. Did that moment of the match live up to the hype for you? Because Everyone in the world would have loved for Austin to come back and been a part of that. I've heard sickness is something mm -hmm. that kept him from being involved. Did it work for you having The Undertaker deliver the final blow to the final boss, at least in this chapter you know, of the story? It, it was funny. If you go back, quick plug for last week's episode with these guys, with their help, we 
kind of laid out a scenario where this would happen. And I think my kids were more excited that, oh, Dad, you, you kind of predicted it. And I was like, well, yes, but let's let this play out. We had to go back and watch Cena's reaction because they were like, <laughs> yeah. oh, you said Cena would be there and all that. Um, by the way, Cena running to the ramp. Highlight of the week because that man waddles now and it's, <laughs> I don't know. it's hilarious. He came out during the Oscars he and looked absolutely great. jacked. He yeah, come, he knew what he was going to look like. He, he had comes, to go out for the comes out here. He looks out to WrestleMania. He looks like an <laughs> looks, old man. <laughs> he's walling to the ring, giant bald the spot. It's like, yeah, what happened just, to John Cena? I mean, it was like hilarious. Like but, you know, God bless Cena. He's still out there. He wrestled on Raw. He got his 20 something consecutive year a match in. Uh, but, you know, I thought about it because you even said last time, uh, Tim, about will the Undertaker be there? And I very, in poor taste, dismissed it like, no, it's not really his story. And I do think the plan was for Stone Cold to be there. However, going back and looking at it, the poetic nature of the gong symbolizing this is the end of all this. Of an era. Was... I think that actually was better because if you have Stone Cold, you're only talking about Stone Cold Steel Austin. You're not talking about The Rock. Undertaker a little more subdued. That's also why I'm glad he didn't show up full garb, full entrance. Just I like show that he was up, just dressed hoodie, in my clothes, yeah. done with you, come with me, teleport wherever I'm going. And uh, it was actually a, the better <laughs> ending. I agree. I think about it with Undertaker. Short term, no. Long term, yes. Yes. And what are we in? We are in the Paul Triple H. We can't believe it. And it's all about long term storytelling. My hope is, John, (laughs) that as a casual fan, you are reinvigorated (laughs) enough to keep the Pavlik six pack going because this is Brian's primary source of income. And we've got to keep it going (laughs) for Brian. And I hope that you will be invested even post WrestleMania. Now we knew Cody was going to win. That was no, uh, you know, option, but had Roman won, I would have turned it off and never come back to wrestling (laughs) ever again. Um, Or had, you know, even if it was like, Hey, the rock will ultimately led to that happening. Cause then we're going to have the rock and Cody at SummerSlam. Cause actually we got pushed back a few months, whatever. So, I'm glad nothing like that happened, which I don't think any of us expected that to happen. We all expected Cody to win. But now I'm at least, number one, you're going to make me watch it. Number two, yep. I'm at least I'm a little more bought in from, like I said, I like Cody off off the kayfabe. I like him when he's doing the interviews. I like him when he's doing podcasts and stuff like that. Like There's an interview I brought up multiple times with Cody and Dale Earnhardt Jr. talking about their dads and the yeah, impact they had in their life. Good one. Absolutely incredible. One of the best podcasts I've ever listened to. Just two hours of them going on and on about their dads and the, the, the legacies they've built to get to this point. And that's what I can respect about Cody. So I'm, I'm in on Cody being the champion. Right. Where that goes, <laughs> nobody knows, but... I, I'm at least in to continue to watch as a casual fan. I felt so emotionally invested into what was happening on the screen at WrestleMania 40, especially in that main event on Sunday night. It paid off years of fandom in one night for so many people, and it's brought so many people back to this form of entertainment that we all love. And if there's anything WrestleMania 40 will be remembered for, it's bringing us to what may be coined when it's all said and done as the Renaissance era. And that is what we're living in. We're super excited to be wrestling fans. No apologies needed for that. Wrestling is hot. It is cool again. And I feel like we've been rewarded for sticking it out over all of these years, having the complaints we've had, having the frustrations we've had, and being true fans. Brian, thank you for sharing your fandom with us. My pleasure, my friend. Because I hope that you felt during WrestleMania 40, all of those emotions coming back in from being a young Hulkamaniac watching all of those WrestleManias as a kid that was a fan of this product. Was a little kid watching Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior battle it out again. It was just great. And nothing like pro wrestling. You can't get, you know, the cast of one Broadway musical coming in and saving the you know, second scene for another. You can't get the starting quarterback of insert NFL team substituting for the team that's actually playing. And it's just the perfect blend of characters intertwining and stories being told. It's fantastic. Very well said. John, there's a way to participate with a lot of things that happen that we watch on our screen there with our title sponsor. And that's my bookie. Hey, got a little money from uh, Ray Mysterio, the underdog in that on my bookie. Ended up winning that one. Thanks to uh, Taylor's boyfriend's brother. 
But go to mybookie.ag, use promo code next round. We'll give you that first deposit bonus so you can go and bet on WrestleMania next year and SummerSlam and all the other events, plus all the uh, uh, professional sports, college sports, everything, live casino slots. Go to mybookie.ag, use promo code next round. I love geeking out over this stuff. Appreciate Brian being here with us. This is one of the favorite things my favorite things we've ever produced here on the Meltdown channel. We appreciate you being a part of this journey as we look to finish our story with your subscription. That felt really lame, but I'm going for it anyway. We need your support. Subscribe today. Make sure you like this video, and we'll see you more on the live daily show right here on the Meltdown.